You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Always the past. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Rachel LaForce show. This is me, Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. If this is your first time listening, I hope you come back. Hope you come back. Uh, if you've been around, thanks so much for showing up, baby. Uh, last week, I did, almost a week ago today, uh, the live podcast in Boston, and that was an absolute blast. And I'm just so, yeah, I'm fired up. I'm excited to do more of them. And was really, really grateful, uh, yeah, to have the opportunity. So I'm here back in studio, aka my home office, and we're ready to go. Now, as you guys know, I'm going to jump right in, baby. Oh, I feel like I'm such in the in-between that I just feel like cruddy and I can't, again, a lot of this like growth, so I just am feeling like super uncomfortable. This has been going on for a while. Um, I know it's all in service of what we are moving towards living into, uh, but wow, does it suck? You're right. Not here for it. Don't like it. So I was thinking, I really wanted to give you good energy. I wanted to like really be able to pull. And I was like, <laughs> mama does not have it. Today. <laughs> uh, and for a series of reasons, it's got to get recorded today. I always try to, to, Make sure my my energy is ready for you. But as you guys know, the show must go on, baby. The show must go on. So I was thinking, you know, although I am feeling not at my best, <laughs> we're going to tap into these spirits and we're going to see how they're feeling, okay? So welcome to the episode that I call the spiritual grab bag. You're right. So what we're going to do is I went to my decks and I was kind of like, all right, general where we at, like general feel good energy. And I'm starting to already like feel it build up. So I know that it's going to come through and just kind of this idea of like, it, it could be evergreen, but it does kind of feel like where we are in this part of our journey. Like, what are we needing? Like, what are we needing in this uncomfortability? What are we needing to put our trust in? What does, what needs to be let go of? What do we like need to be reminded of? Because I don't know, well, I was going to say, I don't know if you're feeling this way, but I'm going to guess a handful of you will feel connected to this, which is like, it almost feels where you're like, I've been cord cutting. I've been letting things go. Yeah, Rachel, I listened to the episode 999. We all get it, right? Cute, cute, cute. Like, and it feels like there's just more to shed and more to shed. And or like speaking specifically for me, I feel where I'm like, wow, I thought I was so much closer to that next version of myself and like now really seeing the distance between the two, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But me really realizing like, oh, I'm, this is a much bigger jump than even how big I knew it was going to be, right? So I thought, let's go to the cards. So what I do is I, as I picked a couple of decks right before we started um, for a few different purpose purposes, and here, here's what we've got. So I grabbed a surrender deck. So I was like, okay, first things first, what do we need to surrender to? That's the first thing. What's going on? What do we need to surrender to? Okay. Number two, this is a deck that I don't love. It's a little bit more, I don't know, like wolf girl than uh, the energy I typically give off. But by way and by series, it ended up in my hands. This is angels and ancestors. And so I was like, okay, we need to go outside of our comfort zone. That was why I connected with this deck because typically I like to get decks that I feel super connected to, but also, which I think is important all the time, but also sometimes it's like, well, you could still find connection with things that maybe wouldn't be your first pick, right? So it was like, okay, we're going to use that energy. What is something to step outside of our comfort zone? And then whenever we got to do a little bit of work, you know what I mean? You earned it, baby. So this is my favorite deck. This is a very racial force deck. And so this, this one is going to be all about like, what do we need to remember about ourselves? 
like all of these things that we're trying and it's like, oh, it's hard or it's this, the expansion. Oh, I can't quantum leap. Like whatever the thing is, like I can't hold the faith or, you know, all of those things. It's like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You've done this before. You know that you can. Even if you're like, no, Rachel, you don't understand. Like this is a very new spiritual awakening for me. Like all of this is new. I can't, I can't. I promise you that you can, right? So this this card pull, card number three is going to be all about um, pulling that back up out of self. What is that thing that we need that reminder of? And then fourth card pull is going to be all about what does your body want to tell you? Don't forget you are doing this on a physical plane and you're doing this, all of this work on a physical plane for a reason, right? So I really, I've really been loving this deck. I've been sharing a lot from it. And so let's dip back into what, how does our body want to show up for us? And we're probably not giving it the credit that it's due, right? And then lastly, uh, I love this deck. This is the native spirit deck. Let's go ancestors. Like, what's up? Give me some knowledge, right? So that way I've kind of designed it of like, let's surrender something. Let's let it go. Then let's step outside of our comfort zone. Let's be reminded of the fierce beings that we are. What does our body want to do and show up to support and help us? And then lastly, what is some ancient wisdom that can remind us it's all been done before and we are the perfect match for our mountain? Cool. Spiritual grab bag, baby. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. So again, this is the Power of Surrender deck, a 52-card deck to transform your life by letting go. And there's this beautiful, like, ah! just e eagle on the front, on the front. Uh, my dear friend, Mystic Rain, gifted this to me. Uh, she's been on the podcast. You can go and check that out. Also, I highly recommend going to check out all of her insight and knowledge uh, over on her Instagram. Um, or she's got a great Instagram too, but on her YouTube. She has long-form videos there. Go check out Mystic Rain. Okay. Uh, if this is your first time pulling cards with me, this is how I like to do it. I'm going to hold them for a minute, putting that intention into the deck as I define it. I'm going to close my eyes, say a prayer for me, for a prayer for us, that we're all going to get this collective guidance that we're needing, and I'm going to pull that card, okay? If you're like, how do you pull cards? I always say, it's just like when you go to Olive Garden, and they've got the cheese grater, and they say, you say when, your intuition knows when it's enough cheese. So same thing. Uh, I'm connecting with my higher self. And uh, when she says when, that's when. Cool? My higher self is an olive garden. Here we go. If you're not driving, go ahead and close your eyes. Say an intention for this. What is something that you're wanting to let go? <sighs> and surrender. Here we go. Hmm. I like this. Um, thank you for the awkward pauses. I know podcasts aren't really supposed to have those, but I think I'm actually wanting to pull something that um, is authentic. And so I think actually taking that time and then it gives you a moment to actually get clear for yourself too, right? I mean, I know for all of the uh, podcast from other spiritual teachers and healers that I listen to any of these practices that they do, I feel like I get to be a part of, which is so great because, um, I have two small kids and I don't have as big of a community yet here as I would like. So it's a great way to like really get centered. And I think just to ask yourself that question. So it's funny when I was thinking about pulling the cards, the only thing I kept hearing was like, just like surrender to the hard. Like I, I it's, it's that very classic thing of, I've said this a million times, but in case this is your first time, I would hate to rob you of such a parable. Uh, there were two men walking down the beach, going to their destination, and the tide came in and took them into the ocean. And one man flung his hands all around, and he couldn't believe this was happening and tried to save himself, and he drowned. And the other man put his hands behind his head and allowed the ocean to carry him, and it swept him to shore, and he ended up at his destination faster than had he walked. Right. And so that's just what I've been feeling of like, why do I some days, some moments give into the energy of like, this is too hard. I'm farther away. Maybe that's not authentic for me. Like, 
you know, da 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 like all the shit we try to say when we want to like back out of shit. You know what I mean? It's like your friend you're supposed to go to the gym with in the morning and then they're like, oh, well, I did then, I did that. It's like, just say, you just give me an excuse so you don't want to go, right? Um, and so I just kept hearing like, it feels, we're all just keep tapping into the reasons why it's hard, which only makes it harder, right? Like the more that we're like, Oh, this is, and now that's not denying your feelings. Okay. There's a difference. Cause one of you out there just started therapy and you're gonna be like, well, Rachel, your feelings, I get it. All right. So I love this card so much and it actually makes me emotional. It's also funny cause it matches my outfit today. Uh Oh, Hey, lime green cerulean. Um, this or not cerulean cerulean is blue. The, uh, chartreuse. There we go. You see how we get them confused. White lady colors. Okay. Um, so this is surrender to your soul's path. Surrender to your soul's path. Your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson and every moment. Easier said than done, right? But that's where I was like, oh, I also love how soft this message feels of like, hey, all you have to do is just like fall back. Like, that's it. Like, all you have to do. Like, the reason that any of us are even doing this work, and however you define that, is because we know that there's an end in sight. We know where we're going. We know that we're being divinely led, yet the human in us wants to kick and scream the whole way. And I think the hard should be recognition that it's working. Like, the heart, right? It's like if, if your dreams don't embarrass you to share with somebody, they're not big enough or whatever those cute little memes are, right? And it does feel the same way of like, yeah, it should be hard, you know? Like living authentically according to yourself in a world that makes billions of dollars by convincing you that you're not enough all of the time, all day long, on your phone, in the car, on podcasts, on YouTube, on TikTok, from your other friends. We got a new car. Did you see our new car? Oh, we got this thing. Oh, we redesigned this thing. Oh, like all day long, you're just being met with, if you choose to take it this way, your inadequacy. You are unworthy. You are not enough. And so choosing to be like, yes, I am. And in fact, so is everybody else around us. We're just living in this matrix that has set up, you know, to convince us of something otherwise is hard. And I love this card because it goes directly into the idea of stepping out of our comfort zone because that's what this hard is about. This lack of surrendering to your soul's path feels hard, even if you're going with it. Like I would say, I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking signed up. I'm on board. I got my ticket. Like, where are we going? You know, like I've surrendered. I'm into it. But there's still times where it's like, man, this is really hard. Like, showing up the discipline of it. That's for me is the discipline of it because it feels fucking relentless. If I'm being honest with you, like raising two small children, getting this, you know, uh, a building up and off the ground, like leading the show, doing all of this, trying to figure out what's going on with my hormonal imbalance and like taking care of my body and like moving my body more. And like, just getting back into like what I feel is like a healthy, like just like off, like we've got the energy body takes a lot of fucking work and I'm tired. I'd like a vacation and I don't want to do it anymore. Right. But that's the thing of like great abundance requires great responsibility. That's why it is. That's why so many people, you know, maybe their soul's journey is like they get everything that they ever thought they wanted and they burn out or they get everything they thought they wanted. And they're like, Oh fuck, I didn't want any of this to begin with. Right. And so it's like you, I always say you choose your heart, but in this scenario, like let's just surrender to what we've already signed up for. It's already happening. You're already doing it. So first is we're going to surrender to our soul's path. And a lot of that, why it's hard, I'll speak for me and not for you, is moving myself from my old story was everybody else gets to be first and I'm always second. That was the story I'll share another time of the a myriad of things of times I was bullied or things that happened to me or things that my friends did to me that was mean or relationships I ended up with. with I mean, I have a lot of examples, okay? Not to brag, but I've got a few. Um, right of where I, I, I wasn't like, oh, no, no, no. This can be everyone else's story, but like get the fuck out of my way. You know what I mean? Like I get to be number one and rightfully, so does everybody else in their own story, okay? And so moving into this narrative of, 
I am allowed to be as big as I want. I am allowed to be seen. I am safe to be seen. Uh, I am welcome to be, you know, all of these things. That's, it is moving outside of my comfort zone because it's creating a new comfort zone. So it moves perfectly into this next deck. So again, go ahead and close your eyes if you're not driving uh, or pouring yourself a hot cup of coffee and just have a thought about that of like, what is it that's being, what do you feel like you're being called within to step out of your comfort zone? What, what, what is happening and what is being asked of you in order to do so? Okay. Saying a prayer that we will receive in our highest for you and for me. And here we go. Hmm. Sweet. You got the heart guardian. You guys, this is so lovely. Spiritual grab bag. We'll have to do more. Slow down, LaForce. You've only pulled two of the five cards. It could go awry. But this is the heart guardian card. And this says let, or excuse me. No, it doesn't. Dyslexic. Love and let yourself be loved. Love and let yourself be loved. Um. And I love this so much all because it feels again, where whatever your heart is, whatever you're coming up against, that thing that you need to surrender a lot of times, like all it just needs is more love. And I, I honestly forget that. Like, I'm not a bit like I, how do I say this? I forget how like love does actually fix most things. Like, not if like, if you're in a shitty relationship, like, you know, don't have a baby thinking that's going to fix it. Like, you know, run, but there are so many things that the more of like, we could honestly have never met somebody where I'm like, you could affo afford to pull back. Like so many people need to love themselves so much more. I've never met somebody where I'm like, I feel like you love yourself enough. I feel like, you know, we're good. You hit it. And so I, this card just feels so powerful because it's giving you a, the permission to love yourself as you're moving into what is stepping outside of your comfort zone. So, you know, for me, again, when I, it's stepping out and creating this new story for myself of like, I am lucky, I win, people like me, people like uh, seeing themselves in me. The more I share, the more I can bring people to their authentic truth. Like, Rather than old stories, which is like, oh, people are going to think I'm weird or, you know, what, we're not even going to go into old stories because they don't, don't exist anymore. And frankly, they're stories, which is made up. Um, but this new truth is really hard. It's hard to stick. And so to guess whatever your truth is, whether you resonate with that specific one or what you're moving through, it's very difficult sometimes to see ourselves in the position of being seen and adored and loved and being okay with that. And it's the acceptance of it. Right. And there's so many times I see people, maybe this is your narrative. It used to be mine of like, like, Oh, I can't meet anybody. I can't meet anybody. And that they just keep dating the same person, you know, but a different version of that person over and over again. It's like, well, cause you can't receive love. You're not giving it to yourself yet. Right. And it's like learning to be able to, not, I know that where it's like, you have to love yourself first before anyone else can love you. I don't think it's so hard that way, but I think it's for sure if you are in a position where you are not accepting that self-love, you are not self-accepting, it's going to be really fucking hard to let somebody else show up in a way that they want to love you authentically because it's not a match. It's not an energetic match. So it's the same thing. I could go all over the fucking country doing song and dance and trying to get people to pay attention to me. But if there's still that missing piece of worthiness that I don't feel safe to stand and be adored because my old Christian programming is like, well, people who want to do that, they're just full of themselves. And it's like, well, I don't feel like I'm full of myself. The fact that this is so fucking hard is because I've convinced myself that everybody else has the answer other than me. So, and I'm going to guess that that narrative is, is really sticks true to many of you. Now you may pull different parcels of that same idea, but that is such a collective story for so many of us, specifically women is such a story and especially empathic women 
right? Of this, like, no, no, it's fine. You go first, you go first, which would be fucking great if everybody lived like that so that we could all share in this collective experience. But unfortunately, you know, trauma, life, soul stories, like that's just not always the case. And so I would just really encourage all of you of like, what would it feel like? Yeah. I like also my body is like really responding. I'm having, so I feel like this is so powerful for so many of you. That's why it's like being so heavy and activated in my body of just this feeling of like, you absolutely deserve to be adored. And, you know, if you think about it, like in celebrities, cause that's typically the way we think about it. Like random because it's just off the top of my head this will not be evergreen but i guess rihanna has a new like um fenty line that's all for like uh natural curly hair and so she has like her um natural she like i mean first of all she's fucking beautiful she looks great in anything but she looks so beautiful and i'm sure just like within like the culture of black women and like caribbean women and all of that like what she is able to stand and project for everybody for them to see themselves in her and it's this idea of like you know, being able to like adore her, but I'm also like, I don't think that that at all, that it's like, oh, she's perfect or she never makes mistakes or like the, allowing yourself to be adored simply means that people can see the beauty and, and the, the divinity in you. That doesn't mean that you don't have shadow, that you don't have other problems that you don't, right? But it's like, in certain ways, when, especially, uh, I love that um, example about Rihanna because it's the authenticity. It's the authenticity of choosing to stand and say, this is exactly who I am. This is the lineage of women that I come from. This is, you know, heritage. I mean, we do a whole podcast on that. There's so many other things in there. But I think that just going back to that idea of like, it's really okay to allow yourself to be adored. It's really okay to let people tell you that you're beautiful. It's really okay for people to tell you that, you know, they see you. And because when we're doing it authentically, that's the gift. The gift is if I show up authentically, if you show up authentically and you're sharing whatever your gifts are to be shared, other people are, it's heart, uh, you know, connectedness, heart coherence. People are affected by that. And so one of the quickest ways to grow in whatever that comfort zone is that stepping outside of it is loving yourself through it. And knowing that on the other side of it, whatever this is, you're building a new business, you're leaving a marriage, you're entering a marriage, you're cleaning out your parents' home because your mother passed away or like whatever these big things are and you're learning to live life a different way, one of the number one things to help yourself get through that is love. So I I know I talked a long time on that card, but I felt very, very connected to that. Okay. Surrender to your soul's path. Know that it doesn't have to be hard because it's exactly where you were going. When you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, what do you need to remember? The heart guardian. Okay. So more love, more love, more love. All right. And then our next card is going back to, um, this like feels like a very just kind of like nineties, like cool girl, like card pool. Like also like, let's remember what makes you fucking badass in your own right. Like you don't have to go around convincing everybody or even with this, like, Oh, I'm stepping out. Like we don't need to make it harder than it needs to be. Like just what is one thing that you need to hear right now? That is a reminder to everything you need. You already have. Okay. So any message around that, that you're seeking, go ahead and put that. Also, there's a cardinal sitting out um, of the tree directly in front of me. So if you're um, connected to a cardinal at all, know they showed up. All right, here we go. Uh, Again, close my eyes, say a prayer. Here we go. Oh, this is great. I don't know why I'm always surprised when I do card pulls that they're like good, you know, like I'm like, I don't know why, but every time I'm shocked. This is the forbidden forest. And this says it's number 35. If you're a numbers person, 35, you are so brave to keep on going the way that you do the forbidden forest, bravery, persistence, and redemption. I know it's hard to see this card, but it's this beautiful adorned woman 
and coming out of the water surrounded by mountains and trees, obviously this forbidden forest. And she's placing her hand on a big portal opening to the universe. So again, I think this is the perfect card of like all we have to do in this moment. Oh no, the card dropped. Oh no. No, no. Okay. All we need to do is surrender to that path pouring more love on it because you're already doing it. Like you're already doing it. You're already moving through this forbidden forest. And I love when we talked about, you know, stepping outside of our comfort zone, which is why we're all feeling this way, right? A couple of weeks ago, it was like 999, that shit's done. We know we're starting this huge new cycle. We know that we're ready to take on this next thing that we're building. We've let go of all these stories. We're creating new ones. We're writing them in the moment. So it's like, you are already so brave. You're already doing it. So there's no need to be like, you know, kind of keep digging up, you know, the seed being like, is it working? Is it working? Yeah. You already are brave. You're persistent. And this idea of redemption is what I love because that feels very personal to me. And I'm sure if it's personal for me, it feels there's something about it that connects very real for you, which is, I feel like, yeah, I motherfucking owe it to myself. I owe it to myself to write a new story because I can't go back and change everything that I did and all the people that I let lead and all the times I betrayed myself. And, and also like, this is it. This is it. We get one shot. And, you know, I always say, I think it's easy sometimes to be like, oh, I can't believe I'm awakening at like, you know, 30 some odd. It's like, oh, I've wasted all this time. It's like, no, why can't we look at the other way of like, wow, you're only 30 something, right? And even if you're listening to this podcast, you're like, oh, fuck off, right? I'm 55 or whatever. Like the idea of it's like, isn't it better now than never? And so you're already doing this work. And again, just the fact that she's going into this portal of you're already stepping into your comfort zone. You're already going into this space of unknown, but it's different than before because you're going in with purpose. You're going in with persistence. Again, going back to the discipline thing we were talking about, like you know what you're going after this time and you know that you're stepping into the unknown. So just knowing that it's like, yeah, good. That's what you signed up to do, right? So this was like the perfect card for that of like, Yeah, there shouldn't be anything else that shows up. Like, you were the one that chose this, right? I love that. I love that. Okay. Uh, And now I want to pick a card for, is there any body intelligence? What is our body? How does our body want to work with us? Um, And what does it want to reveal to us as we go through this? Because I feel like, I won't speak for you, but for me, so often it's easy to... (sighs) Slow down for just a second. So often it is too easy. We live, especially those of us with like really open crown chakras and big meditators and all this, like it's so easy to live up there. And it's like, which is great for like guidance and and everything else. But I'm like, you got to ground it. You have to come back into your body. You have to find like, how do we take that and make it real? That's the whole, like, for me, like going like super like woo woo, what I love so much is it's like, yeah, it's literally getting the information, pulling it down and making it real. Like it's literally the Sims, you know, it's like, that's exactly what it is. Like, okay, we're going to figure out how to make this and you make it with your physical body. I mean, your physical body, it's like, I think I hesitate sometimes to talk about body stuff because we all have different sensitivities around it and what somebody thinks is fat. Another, per, it's, that's their goal weight. And then some people love the word fat. They reclaimed it. And some people hate the word fat. And like, there's just so much to unpack. Um, and so it's not about thinness, but it is about being in your body. And I do know this, that when we nurture our body with what it needs, which is hydration, movement, rest, whole foods, right? Um, That's also not to say our body is also here for pleasure. So sometimes that is chocolate chip ice cream or like pizza with friends, like grabbing drinks. Like, yes, that is, this is a pleasure center. That's the whole idea. 
But when we nurture our body and giving it the basic things that it needs, everything can move through. I mean, that's been my biggest thing of like with heavy exercise for me, which has not been a part of the routine right now, which is probably also why I'm feeling like yuck. But when it's in the regular routine is it allows your body to reset itself. Like, yes, you have rest, but for those of us that carry high energy intelligence in our body, when you receive information through your body, um, whether that's as a healer for other people or for yourself, and the more you connect to that, you have to move that out of your body. It's like an etch, like an etch a sketch, right? Some of you Gen Z may be like, Oh, what Uh Google, but an, uh, an etch a sketch, was the, now it's just like a cool, like vintage toy. But, um, like if you write too many things on it, then you can't see anything anymore. So you have to shake it up and then you have this clean slate again, and then you can go in and write something new. And that's what our body does. Like if you're feeling like, oh, I'm frustrated or, oh, like this thought isn't coming through or I'm not connecting with my guides or I'm whatever that is. I guarantee you go for a run, you go lift some heavy shit, you come back, that connectivity is going to be there because this energy is real. It lives in our body. So when you can process it out and then come back to, it can reset itself. So as we do, especially doing hard things, disciplined things, you have to make time for that. Like stopping, I'm behind on everything this week. Just add it to the list. And I had to stop this morning and I'm like, I've got to make myself a meal. Like I need to, like, we're not going protein shake. Like I need to eat actual food. So I was like, all right, we scrambled some eggs. We had some spinach, put a little avocado in there, a little, you know, low fat Greek yogurt. We got some fats, we got some protein, we got some greens. Great. Now I got to guzzle down these supplements, like yuck, right? And it's like, okay, we'll take those, drink some water. Okay, cool. Now we're good to go, right? It's like setting that foundation and respecting. So much of it is about honoring and respecting what our bodies are able to do for us. So I think whether you're like me and really becoming online to the power that's held in your body, rather than feeling disconnected and disassociated from your body for again, because you're a woman in the world. <laughs> um, and so really, again, that redemption, that sense of like, no, there's so much like intellectual instinct that lives in my body. And I want to allow it to come through to help me, like, especially people where it's like, you know, you're doing all this work to meditate and download and do all this stuff and connect. But again, if you're not grounding it in anything, then that also may be part of what's slowing you down. So if you're feeling, especially with like manifestations or like even the speed of anything, not that it's about speed, but if you're feeling that things are taking longer than they should, a lot of times it's because that intelligence is sitting in your body, but it feels like all just kind of the gunk is stuck in there. And the more that you can begin to move that and build movement into your daily routine, the quicker that's going to speed up because that just internal wheel of energy is going to spin faster. All right. Uh, so now that you heard my TED talk, go ahead and uh, center yourself and asking for what is it that your body wants to tell you or how is your body wanting to show up for you? Here we go. Yeah. Ooh. So this is star element, higher passion and in interplanetary homes. Ooh, I feel like I just want to give you my instinctual read on that, which is funny because it's literally exactly what I just said, which is like, um, there's so much higher energy and things that want to come through. And when you're not nurturing your body, like even if we think about like 
Um, my husband and I typically like once a week, it's like our at home date night on Saturday nights. And like, we'll make a big like charcuterie trait in like, it's like snacks. It's the time for like mom and dad to basically like have a sleepover and like hang out together. Right. And so it's like that night I'm not that concerned with, you know, and typically we eat really well, but it's like, that's our night to like snack. Right. And so it's going to take longer. Your sleep isn't going to be as good. The next day it's going to be harder because your body is processing all of that processed, you know, in a charcuterie, meat, cheese, you know, chocolate covered almonds, uh, you know, whatever else, like candied fruit, all of the things. And so it's going to take longer. So when you're in this place of wanting to manifest, bring things in faster and move through it faster, that's what your body wants to do. It's again, it's the star element. It wants to be a place of allowing you to access that higher passion so let's see what it says here. Um, yeah. Oof. I'm really lit up by this. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love this. Okay. Star. Yes. Yeah, so it's um, higher passion and interplanetary uh, homes. And this says the function is to intensifies truths, eliminates lies and connects to other planetary systems. So, what I I also love so much about this is it's like, um, I think also the idea of like, at least for me and my read of like connecting to other planetary homes, that also just feels like being more in sync. So meaning whether you follow like the phases of the moon or you're a big astrology person or it's like really what I hear is like zoom out. That's what that feels like to me of like when you're connecting to this higher collective energy, you can tap in and see, because to me, um, astrology is just a tool, right? And anything that we give, um, authority has authority. So some people I know that are highly spiritual and have a lot of practices don't participate in astrology. Like again, you pick and choose, but just for what we're talking about right now, I always see astrology. If you're looking at it, it's like, if you're playing, um, like Mario or something, and it's like you hear that womp, 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 and he like goes down in the tunnel like that's all it is like if you see that there's this opening or there's a high prosperity day or you know so and so is sitting in your chart and this is the time to like take action and whatever else it's offering you that portal it's offering you that mario tunnel to connect you faster and so that that's really how that card reads to me again that's just my um not even like higher take on it, but just as like Rachel LaForce, that's how I identify it. But again, I think there's so much higher energy that wants to come in and wants to come through you specifically, um, that nurturing that your body in that way, this kind of higher work that you're doing is just like, it's going to go so much faster when you're nurturing it here on earth, like through your body first. That's a really big one. Um, and I think especially when we're doing things that are hard or scary, a lot of time our tendency is to do comfort things. So what even whatever your comfort foods are or your comfort shows or like we tend to want to shrink rather than to expand. And that's actually the thing that I love the most about eating well and eating clean is – my body is already just more alive, more active. And so therefore I'm less likely to shrink or make other choices, like to begin a series of choices that aren't in service of myself because I've already kind of been like, you know, in it and moving through. Um, hold on. Um, yeah. Lastly, that it, it said that it intensifies truth and, eliminates lies. And so again, I think that like, like my body's been doing this weird thing where like, I literally get a gut reaction. So if I say something or I hear something and it's very true for me, my body almost like jolts from my gut. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. Like that's never happened before. And like completely, um, I mean, not where it's like distracting or anything, I'm not like in conversation with somebody and like, you know, falling over, but enough where I'm like, Ooh, that's interesting. Like that actual gut instinct is like physically there. So it's my body being like, yes, that's in alignment. Um, and so it's connecting to those higher truths way quickly. Um, when, uh, way quickly, way more quickly, way quicker guys, she's tired. Um, and then even when I'm hanging out with people and right now I'm like, 
trying to make, or not trying, I'm actively like building new friends, new relationships, new communities. And when I leave places and I leave, and I leave a little like foggy or a little tired, that's also my body letting me know like, oh, that wasn't exactly an energetic match. When I sit down with somebody and I leave and I'm like, whoo, that is again, that's that energetic like truth. That's that higher passion of like, yeah, that's a match, right? I think especially for those of you that are dating, this element is so major. If you're looking for a job, like any of these major pivot points, like I think this is true for all of us, but I just got that ping to share that of like, if you're dating, if you're, you know, so it's like when you're on dates and being there, like allowing your body, because sometimes people that look great on paper, we're like, well, certainly I should be a good match for them, but there just may be something off. Right. And it takes three months for people to really fucking reveal themselves anyway. So allow your body to give you that intelligence. Same thing. There may be what you thought was a dream job. Oh my God, I'm finally going to be an editor for Netflix or, oh my gosh, I'm finally moving up in my company or like whatever these things are, um, that you, you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. But pay attention because our mind can convince us of a lot of things, but our body doesn't lie. So really giving yourself that chance. All right. So we've got Surrender to your soul's path. Allow for your heart guardian to lead you as you're doing things that feel uncomfortable and new. Trusting that forbidden forest that you're already brave, you're seeking self-redemption and you're on the path. The way that we're going to continue to do that is by nurturing our bodies and allowing the star element to reveal itself. So we're on our last card and uh, this is all about uh, ancestral... Um, I was almost like ancestral trauma. No episode for a different day. Uh, ancestral wisdom and intelligence, because I also, it's why I really love learning from indigenous, uh, cultures and spiritual connection. I feel very connected to it, but also, um, it's because it's of this earth. Uh, there's something very like ancient and, uh, and heavy in a way that feels very, beautiful and protective. Um, so I really love this deck is called native spirit. So this will just be our last card. Again, we've kind of gone body, mind, and soul, um, through these five cards. And this is just really kind of locking all of this in. I'm really seeing this as like our anchor card. Um, is this like five card spread? So again, if you are seeking, <sighs> Yeah, this feels like you guys, there's a lot here. Um, if you feel like you have been seeking this sense of really wisdom or grounding, needing, struggling to ground all, yeah, that's really the word, struggling to ground all of this movement and change, that's what this is. So just hold that idea in your head of what do you need? What is that guidance? Even if you don't know the answer yet, kind of holding that in place for yourself. And let's, uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Oop, well, it fell out. Is there only one? All right. Spirit keeper of the north. She fell out. So let's see. West, south. Here we go. Okay. Spirit keeper of the north. And on here, there's um, like a full moon. So the moon is out and it's dark outside. The card says, take time for contemplation. Turn within connect with your ancestors, incubate ideas, mend relationships, watch your dreams, meditate. The answers are inside you waiting to be heard. Stay warm, create dreams for your future. 
Repair whatever is broken in your home and in your life. Forgive those people and situations that you've been dragging around for a while. Your native spirit wants you to know. In the medicine wheel, the north is the direction that symbolizes the darkest time of the night. Mm, There it is. The coldest part of winter and the dark of the moon. It also represents the elder time of life and even a time of endings. Pull the spirit keeper of the north. Pulling the spirit keeper of the north indicates that it's time to take measure of your life. Explore what's working, what's not working, what and whom do you need to release. It's also the time to make repairs in your physical environment as well as repairs to your body. You know, guys, she can't make it up. Okay. Additionally, this is the time to begin to dream and make plans regarding your future. Your ancestors are close at this time and call on them. They want to help you. The journey. Stand outdoors at night, facing north, inhale the darkness, and sink into your own depth, into the stillness, and ancient wisdom emerges. All right. Here's what I love about this. Because I pulled it. Well, I didn't pull it because it fell out. And I was like, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's the right one. I was like, well, keep going. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what it is, that we are in we're not quite in this dark night of the soul. Some of you may be, but I feel like the majority of you, this is really kind of a big level up from where, let me pull these together, like where you have been, what you have been doing. Gosh, these are beautiful. We'll have to, we'll put, put pictures of them up, but um, like what you've been doing and what you've been moving through And it does kind of feel a little bit of like a dark night of the soul. Like it definitely feels like the sequel for me where like, okay, I've done it once. I know what it is. And it's like, okay, like dark night of the soul for Rachel LaForest, but it's back, you know, but it's like this time we're in Atlanta. Like it just feels like, you know, there's new challenges and like new cast. Uh, And so it feels a little bit of that because it is allowing for a major death of self and even who you were when you started this journey, you've outgrown them. And that feels interesting for us to be like, whoa, there's even more. And it's like, yeah, dude, there's fucking even more, you know? And so it is that of like, I think that sense of being grounded is being still that when there is all of this movement and so much is happening and so much is changing, the way that you ground is to stop, is to be still right? If you guys remember from a few months back, I've been really trying. I was like, I was trying to get up at like 530 in the morning so I could exercise in the morning. And like, I was trying to get so many things done first thing in the morning. And I was like, this is just not possible. Right. And so now I've solidified where it's like six to seven, I get up, I have my decaf coffee, uh, still missing caffeine story for a different day, my decaf coffee. And I come and I sit down here and I write in my morning pages And I just sit and it's like whatever wants to come up. But I leave my phone upstairs and I just sit, lights in Palo Santo. And like what just wants to come up? Because I need to just give myself the space to not plan. Like I feel like so many of us are in that place where we know what the next big thing is. And so we've laid it all out and we know what it is. And then it's like all day long, you're pursuing all these things and you're doing all these things. And it's like, dude, you just need to give yourself like a fucking second you know, like you need that stillness. And so I really, really love that of the way to ground when you feel that there's so much happening and so much brewing and occurring and manifesting. And it gets a little, we get a little dizzy um, and like a little cloudy almost, which feels confusing because it's like, wait a minute, but I thought I knew exactly what I'm doing. Why would it feel cloudy? And it's because you're not slowing down enough to give yourself that time to truly connect. So I just want to read, oh, I think it, where did it go? Spirit of the North. Here we go. Yeah. One more time of just take time to con- uh, to contemplate, turn within I also love the ideas of like, this is the time to like repair the things in your home and your life, go through your closets. Like, I know we've been doing this, like I said, of the 999 and we've been slowly releasing, but I feel like there's still, we're still in that release period. Um, And just really allowing yourself, yeah, in the medicine wheel, the north is the direction that symbolizes the darkest time of night. And I feel like that's 
really the window that we're in, which is like this big jump from where we've been to where we're going feels most real to us right now. And so finding that stillness is just going to be so beneficial. Cool. So that's it. That's our spiritual grab bag for today. So this is, yeah, number one, surrender to your soul's path. Again, your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Growth is the key word. Embrace every lesson and every moment. So again, as you're doing things that are hard, how can we, as best we can, have our feelings and sit with it, but also be like, I asked for this. This is in service of where I'm going. So it's growing pains. If I feel uncomfortable, if I feel like this is hard, then yeah, fuck yeah. That means it's working. Secondarily, when you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, you're doing these new things and it feels hard. You just got to pour more love onto it. Give it more love, more love. That's what it is. The heart guardian. Uh, and in fact, that's what I love about these. It's the idea that you can call upon this guide or, you know, it's, it is, they, they're here to guard your heart. So knowing that you can call upon them. And lastly, remembering like you're already being fucking brave, dude. You're already doing it. And in fact, you've probably come many a mile from when you started. So be really proud of yourself. Be proud of yourself that you're still doing things that are unknown and that you're seeking that self-redemption. You're being consistent. You're being persistent and you're already brave. Remember that your heart, that your body wants to help you. Your body isn't here. So like your gap genes look cute. Okay. Your body is here because it wants to help you. It wants to help you move through what it is that you're moving through. So allow it to show up and be a star for you. Allow it to, but it can't do it without your help. It cannot do it without your help. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, that spirit of the North and allowing yourself to slow down in that stillness. Um, that's what I got. And friends, if you really felt connected to this, lucky you, you can head uh, over to my Substack. And uh, there's plenty of things on the Rachel Force Substack that are for free every week. So join that portal. You can also join uh, our community there. It's behind a paywall. It's only $9.99 a month. Yeah, I know. Okay. You're welcome. It's only $9.99 a month. So many of you have been like, I want to work with you, but it's not in my budget. And Listen, I've been broke with the best of them, so I get it. And even if you're not in that financial situation anymore, you're wanting to save it or this or that, you don't have the time or there's someone else that you feel called to for readings, whatever it is, now I've made an entire place for you to be able to get even more out of this spiritual community, out of this creative community. And I'm really going to spend some time nurturing and putting things in there. So especially if you're even seeking community of other people you know, we're going to be doing more Q and A's back there. We're going to be doing, and like, we'll even do like breakout rooms and you could like get a partner. So there's going to be a lot more of actually creating virtual community there. And as this podcast continues to expand, we'll do those in different cities. Like we just were in Boston. So we're going to keep growing this thing and I'm staying in it. And that's what we're going to do. So head over to Substack, join, throw your credit card in there. You'll know I appreciate you. Nine ninety nine a month. You're welcome. Okay. And so each week there's going to be bonus features. Uh, so this week I'm going to have a guided meditation that will walk us through um, all of these and a little bit of, um, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into each card, pulling like one specific message. So if you felt called to any of these specifically, You'll be able to log back in and get that quick pull of each of the, the feedback of these cards. So I can go into these cards a little bit more in depth. It'll just be adding on from what we went on here um, today, but a little bit more um, logistics and then also um, exercises of what to do to strengthen each of those individual cards. So there's physical things that you can do. So go over uh, to Substack for that. You'll also get the guided meditation uh, that's kind of like encompassing this whole thing of what do we need to be able to move through uh, this kind of, you know, second uh, sequel, Dark Night of the Soul that we're all experiencing and really walk through that abundance. Okay. So that's over there. Go and check it out. You can also join for free. I've got a Rachel Force Substack. All things are on there. The Rachel Force Show and then the Misfit Light will be coming back in the fall. So we have so much going on. If you have not watched Tired Mom and you like to laugh, guess what, baby? I got 30 minutes of it. Big yuck yucks, okay? Head over to any of the places where you find my content, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, rachelaforce.com, my Substack, uh, and you can go and uh, click on Tired Mom. Watch that. All of that will be here in the show notes.
And I think that's it. Next week is the live podcast recording will be coming out. I'm so excited for you guys to hear that. So thank you so much again for coming out and meeting me and taking photos. It was, it was truly like really great to connect and it really, really meant a lot. And we're going to keep doing more and we're going to keep growing them. And I'm going to use these cards for me just as much as I hope that they, I don't hope I trust that they really resonated with you. Um, and we'll take some pictures of them because each of them individually, they're so beautiful. All right. Be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Again, this is all, all could be made up. We don't really know. So, you know, you don't need to be so hard on yourself. All right. Love you. Mean it. Time, weather, and-